Hi everyone, my name is Marco. I am a testing ex expert from Amdocs with over 12 or 13 years of professional experience in the testing domain where half of my professional experience I was running a big international text testing projects directly on customer premises internationally in their offices and half of my professional work I have done remotely so I have experienced both sides of work directly to their offices and remotely. First of all, be before I even start, it is not very easy to present any of the topics related to the quality assurance or testing in front of an audience, like all of you who at least understand some portion of the testing. So I tried to pick today four subtopics of the topics of design a test execution calendar and I hope that all of you will understand this what I will tell. Before I even start, I want to say thank you to my Infinum friends who invited me today as a guest lecturer to see whether I will be able to increase maybe your interest in quality assurance by explaining this very interesting and critical topic and you will see later why it is, it is uh, critical. So now I will start and I kindly ask you to be very careful about the things that I will speak and if you will have any single question that you want to ask me, please write it and remember it because I can guarantee you that I will answer all of your questions. Even maybe if I will not have time immediately to answer all of your questions, I assure you that we can stay after this session or meeting and we can discuss privately all the things at the, until we close all your uh, doubts. So, first of all, I divided today's session into four subtopics, which I think after my more than decade big of professional experience in testing are the most critical topics. First one is current problems that IT companies are facing in the domain of quality assurance. Then I will go to the topic of designing a test execution calendar and all related problematics that are related to it, which is the most critical part in any testing activity. After this, I will slowly move to identify the problems and the core focal person in entire big testing hierarchy so that we will be able to see who is that person inside big hierarchy of testing who has the most powerful hands and decision and who is the decision making person at the end. And at the end, I will tell you about the problems, advantages and risks of designing very complex test design calendars. So these four topics will be under today's table. And I think that I will be able to successfully explain you all of them separately. And I will again repeat, if there will be some questions or misunderstandings, I will remain with you after this session so that we will clear everybody's doubt on these unique, unique topics. So now, let's be, let's be concentrated on this what I'm telling and let's see how we will, we will move on. Uh, first of all, I will start today's lecture not with a, a direct explanation but with the question, do we know, all of us who are from the testing, did we ever ask ourselves in the morning when we woke up uh, ourselves or during our daily activities and work, did we ever ask ourselves what is the most important thing or process inside the testing? Did you ever ask yourself why every day you are working and what out of all of these bunch of activities on a daily basis is the most important and critical activity. If and only if you ever asked yourself that simple question, I can guarantee you, you are on the way to become an expert. But if you never asked yourself that simple question, that is the answer why you are still sitting on the same place. So now, since we know that testing life cycle is only one part of big software development life cycle, 
which is enormous if you are coming from the background of international projects that are worthy of $100 million where there is no love between team members. These big projects are bringing big responsibility, big software development life cycle, and inside that life cycle, you have a testing life cycle as a sub life cycle. Now, did you ever ask yourself out of all of those testing activities? And we know what all testing activities are there existing because we are doing it every day. Maybe some of you are doing some part of the testing. You will never achieve automation. Like automation guys are doing automation, they will not go into functional perspective too much like independent functional engineers. But ask yourself out amongst all of those hierarchy, lot of managers, lot of independent tester, lot of independent processes, what is the most powerful and critical thing inside any testing project? And that thing from my experience, and I will explain why, is core quality assurance process under, so under testing life cycle is called designing a test execution calendars. First of all, before I even try to dig inside this complex topic, which is the critical part and when I say the critical part, you will understand later what I mean by saying critical part. This test execution calendar design, it is indeed the most important, the most powerful part of any testing project from where everything starts and from where fr and to which everything will be returned as a boomerang in case if it is not done successfully. First of all, we need to understand that if we want to begin even discussing about the quality assurance project, we need to do some fundamentals and to lay down some basics related to a documentation. And first of all, we need to understand that the test design actually is a document that is described by experts in testing, managers in testing, and that entire scope of the project related to testing, related to the scope strategy, tactics of attacking every single point of interest related to the testing, including resources that we need from technical side and resources from human side, including strict deadlines and schedule so that we will obtain so-called testing efficiency at the end. Let's be now very accurate. Prepar preparing such test design execution calendar is one of the most critical thing and on end the most heaviest things in testing. Don't tell me that it is heavier to do the official testing execution. That is mechanical work. I don't care about this. You can learn this every single person in this world. You can bring him, sit him next to you, and you can, teach, you can teach him physically how to do the testing. But did you ask yourself, who prepared that test plan? Who will be responsible if test engineers will do the mistakes and if they will do the errors? Not likely that the test engineers will be responsible. Mainly a little portion, but other supreme managers because you have project managers, you have program managers, which are even more powerful. They will come to the guy and focal point who created these calendars and they will tell him, you are responsible because you are misleading entire team of testing engineers. That's why this is the very critical point. This process all overall includes in, its, in itself Preparation of testing environments, because we have to have all kinds of testing environments to be able to deploy our tests and to start officially doing physical execution. We are writing high-level test calendars and detailed test calendars. What is the difference between two of them? There is a big difference. Uh, detailed test cal cal calendars are calendars that we all write every day. Maybe you don't know. Those are calendars that are officially consisting of test cases, including testing steps in some of the official tools. 
but there is a phase that is even more critical than this phase, that is preceding this phase by one small portion of time. That is a building high detailed, high level test execution calendar where an example myself is reviewing technical documentation that is being written by software architects who know, who, who have the knowledge of entire system in and out. And I am responsible that every single business requirement inside that document is covered fully without any single missing design gaps and problems. And later we will see how. Next thing, we all should be aware that uh, inside big technical documentation, there are a lot of things, chapters and subchapters that are covered. Here I presented on this slide, on the left side, some dependencies on these complex calendars. And on the right side, I tried to extract from this technical documentation most important part, parts and to relate them with our daily activities. I need to tell you, in order for us to build a complex design calendars, we need to have the vision out of box thinking and experience. Why? Because it is, it is less likely that the guy who is the entry level or even the guy who has the experience, but he, he is the one who first arrived to the company, he is a new, new joiner. Even if he is experienced, he cannot be so experienced like the guy who is multiple years in the company and who tested functionalities in and out. These are two worlds. First of all, the guy should be in the company multiple years and the guy should test everything by himself in and out. Secondly, there is one name, I called it assumptions. This part, this is a part that is present in technical documentation. In most of the cases, when doing the design, testing engineers are not taking assumptions into consideration. This part is extraordinarily important because in the assumptions part in technical documentation, we are ag agreeing with the client, what are we not going to do? Let's take the example. If the assumptions, we are saying that we are not responsible for regression testing or performance testing, and if the client agrees, this assumption is very important in order to design the calendars because we are not going to include regression testing and performance testing inside our reports. Why? Because tomorrow, when they start detecting the defects, and if they are classified as the regression one or performance one, they cannot charge us as the penalties. Because you need to be aware about one thing. Your managers will not tell you this. Forget about this. There is a contract that is always being signed between the company who is de de developing the software and the client. In that contract, it is said that if customer starts det detecting multiple problems that are parts of other divisions inside the testing, you need to pay the penalties. Assumptions is ensuring that we are removing responsibilities from our back regarding such type of defects. Next. We need to be a good experts in recognizing all impacted applications inside the system when we start the design of, the, of such calendars. We need to be experts in databases, in all kind of operational systems, Linux, Unix, or whatsoever that your company is working on. And we need to know everything about business support system and operational support system that your company is dealing with. Next, very critical, is a deadline pressure. Your management will give you a deadline that is first agreed. But you, I can assure you that you never know whether your manager is telling you the truth. In 99% cases, he's not telling you the truth. Why? He's trying to push you whether you can finish your calendar quickly so that he can show his performance that it is good. That deadline changes that are frequently happening will push you to make the errors. Do not succumb 
to such initiatives. Why? Because you are the guy who will put the hand on the table when the certification part comes. You don't want that your manager is pushing you with the strict deadlines. This is a fact. Next, if you want to design such a complex calendars, you need to be very accurate and to have the necessary knowledge regarding business requirements analysis and about scoping sessions. Now, if I ask you whether you were part to any scoping session in the past, I don't think that anybody of you will stand up and say, yes, I was part. Because as per the rule, testers are not part of the scoping sessions. Those are software architects, scrum masters, product owners, and other technical stuff, actually developers, programmers. But it is wrong. It is not as per the book, but don't trust the book always. Expert tester who tested all functionalities in and out by himself should be present on those meetings because he can raise his hands when they agree upon final solution and he can find design gaps. He can say, yes, guys, you forgot to mention some other functionalities that we developed a couple of years ago or we cannot test this. And then they will say, why? You give them explanation. They will say, wow, we just realized we missed critical functionality. But they will most always not include us in scoping sessions. You should request them to as part of the statical testing. And what is statical testing? It is testing te of technical documentation as well. Next, at the end, when our complex calendar is prepared, it needs to be revised. What is the meaning of this? We need to ensure that we are receiving critics. I understand that all of us, we don't like to receive critics, nor I like, to be honest. I think when I'm the, the most smartest guy, when I start receiving critics, I feel very bad and angry. That is a normal way of behavior. What can I do there? But in order to remove the responsibility from my back, to ensure that later they will not come to me to tell me that this calendar is designed only by my brain, I do a clever move. I ask for revision of external and internal stakeholders. What is the meaning of stakeholder? Who are stakeholders? All parties in the project that are interested or that have some influence in our projects or project. Internal stakeholders are all members of our team, developers, architects, testers. You take revision from them. That they tell you maybe their advice what they should do additionally. And then what most guys are not doing because they are saying, oh no, we don't want to approach customer. The customer will say that we are bad if we do this. Trust me, external revision and sitting with the customer sometimes in most cases can reveal the gaps in our testing because we are not trying to do industrial espionage. Forget about this. I'm just trying to see the way how customer will test it because I want to incorporate those test cases be before they start officially testing it. I want to be clever to see that maybe I didn't miss something that they will do. And I can tell you that in most cases, this helped me a lot. But now, is customer willing to do this? That is a big question mark. That's why there are project managers who have, let's say, uh, such an attitude to get close to the customer so that customer starts revealing his points so that we can in enhance our calendars. Now, in technical documentation, there are four big parts. As a QA team, we need to support all those four parts. In technical documentation, we have detailed design, so-called. We are covering this by creating unit testing test cases. We know what is unit testing. It is a module testing. We are examining behavior of independent modules, not integrated, module per module. After this, we have a design section. We are covering design section by creating integrated unit test cases. Now, 
we are not examining module as an independent module. We are examining integration and communication between the modules. On the other side, we have system requirements that are being covered in system phase, and we have software requirements that are covered inside UAT phase, user acceptance testing phase. After this, we have production phase, then we have business as usual phase, and then he, we have a maintenance phase. So all overall, the most, imp and remember this, the most important critical process in entire testing is not execution of the testing. Everybody can do this. Even the guy who doesn't know it, you can sit him, you can teach him. What you cannot teach him, what only experience and hard work and million of projects done will teach him, is to create a complex core test design calendars based on which everything will be executed. What happens when customer detects the problems? Do you know what happens then? A contract that is signed between two sides is opened. Everything is about the money at the end. And then they will say, you need to return us the money. Then our company will be angry. Then they will say, who is responsible? It's not the small testing guy who does execution. Nope. It is the person from where everything started, from where we started creating the test cases. From this point, they are opening these kind of calendars and they are checking where are the gaps. And you are the, the guy who is responsible, not anybody else. Okay. Now, let's see. Okay, there are advantages and disadvantages, problems or risks creating these calendars. If I create this calendar successfully, based on my experience, I will ensure that all requirements, business requirements, as most important objective of testing are covered later with the testing execution. I will ensure that all assumptions are covered from the document I explained you all what assumptions can be, what is the heaviness of those assumptions, which in most cases nobody even reads. They are very important. I will ensure that engineers of testing who are taking my calendar and from that calendar are officially building test cases and putting them with the testing steps in some of the testing tool are having precise steps. They have correct information. Why? Because if I do the mistake, they will do wrong testing steps. They will not be responsible. They followed me. I'm critical. I'm responsible. I will ensure that the quality of the software product that we are delivering to client is with utmost higher quality and security. I will ensure that this document acts as a focal point from a document point of view, not from a person point of view, obviously, uh, when clients start testing. Why? Because I told you, when client starts detecting the problems, then they will open my calendars. They will not come to the tester to ask him that you did wrong testing steps. He will say, what can I do? This, this is what I read from an expert who sent me high level steps. Then they will come to me and then they will ask me, no, they will ask me, is it possible, like this question, is it possible that you missed this? There is no love when the projects are very big. At the end, this document will be referral document later for the creation of automation test cases. And we will see later this topic. Why? Because when we ensure that we covered everything as, point of, as part of the functional testing, based on this document, we are opening it and we are asking business department, tell us, guys, what out of all of these test cases will not be changed from a functional point of view frequently in the ongoing period. Why? Because those are candidates for automation. If you have functionalities that are changed frequently during the time, automation engineers cannot follow them with such a speed because you will have to have 2,000 automation engineers. There is no company as such. We need to ensure, based on these calendars, what are candidates 
but good candidates for automation. Everything can be automated, but we are selecting candidates. But if I do mistakes in this calendar creation, there are consequences and risks. I can even lose the position. And you know that we all need to work hard and dedicated to build our position inside the company. Years are needed for you to prove yourself to your company. And more years to prove yourself on the market. But it is needed only one error that you do, everything will collapse. You are not a good expert anymore. We live in such reality. If I do mistakes, what happened? I can miss requirement, which is a big shame. It should not happen. I can skip detecting design gaps in a document. You will say now it was not your responsibility to detect design gaps. You are not writing technical documentation. I know, but you are the expert with a reason. You should detect design gaps. If you are testing 10 years old functionalities, for the God's sake, you should understand what you are testing. You should be visionary. You should tell them they missed something. Again, I can miss critical defects, which is very bad, to let customer detect critical defects, so-called showstoppers. What is the meaning of showstopper? That customer cannot move. It means you detected a problem and everything is dead. They detected problem, everything is dead. They cannot move. It is a showstopper. We should be able to clear all showstoppers so that client will not detect any of them because it is a shame if they detect it. And special penalties are being paid in the contract. And again, your management will never open such a contracts and you will never see them with your own eyes because the money is inside. They will not show to all of you. But I'm telling all of you from experience, you should be very careful about these things. Then decreasing of customer satisfaction is in progress, which is bad. We are losing jobs on international market. When companies losing jobs, you know what happens. Company starts to decrease number of people in the company and we are losing jobs at the end. And I don't want to tell you that as a consequence, we always can have injury or death. If we are doing software testing on military testers or on airplane systems or something in the space, you are very well aware how many times rockets crashed or Boeing 737 MAX crash. What is the cause of it? Software failure. Testing. Testers are very important. Now, this what I presented you here is a high level hierarchy of testers in one company. I'm not saying that this is everything because that hierarchy that I wanted to show you cannot fit on this screen. This is something high level that I presented to all of you. There are a lot of positions and we should be very well aware that there are horizontal and vertical roles and position inside every company, at least big company, small companies they don't need for this complex testing hierarchy. Now, imagine a company that has 10,000 testers. Such a company should have extraordinary HR higher and on the finance level as well hierarchy. There are a lot of teams, sub teams in a different streams of testing, functional, non-functional automation whatsoever. Did you ask yourself, because I asked myself a million times, wow, 10,000 engineers, million roles. Who is the most important one? Everybody is important. I'm not generalizing. Everybody must be important. And indeed it is from the smallest guy to the upper guy. But someone should bring more responsibility than other guys. There are two ways in every testing organization that you can move internationally or domestically. You can express your wish that you want to be a manager one day. Obviously, HR will enhance you and you are going under managerial path. Or you can still have the same strength and power. 
and you can go in dependent professional way. So both of them, managerial, independent, they have same strength, but they are different roles. Now, managerial, it goes working with the people. Independent professionals, they are having still hands-on experience. But I'm strong as the manager. He cannot order me what to do. But I'm having hands-on experience, I'm testing. But manager is working on the organization and on the people. Now, amongst all of us, who is the most critical one and why? Look at these two guys or persons. Testing specialist and testing professional. Both of them are very important guys. Why? Testing specialist is a person in a company, independent, not managerial role, role which means he doesn't have people under him. But he's a focal point in the project who creates and has the impact on designing complex calendars based on which all other testing engineers from the company, automation, non-automation whatsoever, will take the calendars and they will start officially their work. Bigger than him, his friend, I call him his friend, is a testing professional that is a role, test professional, engineer in testing. He does the supervision of multiple testing calendars across cross-account level between the countries and he ensures that everything is up to date. There are no gaps. Now, if you see, there is a group leader and there is a manager. Both of them are having same strength, but Group leader deals with people. Testing manager deals with multiple group leaders. But if you are a specialist or an independent expert or service partner, you are independent professional and you are doing hands-on experience. It means you are pulling up your sleeves and putting your hands into the mud. You are, become a, you are becoming a dirty guy. But the critical one. Why? All functionalities in the company will be filled into your bucket. Why? You know that big projects are having millions of developers. Not every developer can be full stack developer. In big projects from which I'm coming, you have developers who are developing only one module and they, have, they don't have too much time to go to other modules. But imagine when all of those developers, they are putting all the functionalities in your bucket. And after a couple of years, you are the most powerful person because you are the only one in the company who knows entire business of the company. Developers, they know business per module, but you know business of all the modules together. And if you ask all directors of international companies, what were you doing when you were young or what were you doing in the past? you would be surprised with the answer that they will tell you, I was tester. All directors from big companies, they were from the testing team. Why? You are learning business more faster than anybody else. And you are the most important and critical, critical people, cr critical person in the company. All of these people on the screen, they have their roles, their salaries, their educational background, and there is exactly the rule when you can switch from position to position. Now, I want to discuss one very important topic. Today, very important topic. Our companies and international companies, what problems do they face in testing? First of all, let me start with appreciation, motivation, and wrong reward structure. I believe, guys, that this is a topic we don't need to discuss too much. I believe that all of you, at one point of time, saw that your company is not rewarding you very well. I always think I deserve bigger salary, even today. I always think I'm the better than other guys. I always think I deserve more, but I'm not getting it. Why? Because 
your revision is not only done by the expert above, but there are other guys like HR guys, financial guys who don't know what you are doing. They say, no, we don't have budget and we are not getting him bigger salary. Then you can be angry, you can go from the company. But this is a bad thing. Company should recognize who is really the best. And that should be the responsibility of your manager to fight for you in bigger management levels. Now the question is, will he fight for you? I don't know. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You need to be pushy and persistent. If you don't shout constantly, nobody will see you. Even if you are a clever guy, you need to fight and to shout and to shout loudly. Then, companies are setting wrong expectations. They are setting wrong expectation of testing inside technical documents. We discussed about this. Everything goes in bad direction. Everything. Then they need to recorrect technical documentation, which means redesign, which means redevelopment, which means retesting. Who is paying the money for all of this? Company. It is out of the budget. Somebody most likely will be removed from the company. Then they have lack of standardized testing tools. In most cases, company don't know what testing tools they will be able to use. There are millions of testing tools. You can never achieve knowledge of all of those testing tools. Forget about this. My advice is wait for you to arrive in the company and the company based on the budget will allocate the tools of the testing. Then unrealistic deadlines. How many times all of us spoke with our managers and they gave us the deadline for testing. Then after two days, they changed the deadline. They, they cut it by three days. Then they are coming after five days. They cut it again by one week. And then there is a problem. They are putting me in a rush. I will do mistakes. In such circumstances, you can tell them very simply that quality is jeopardized and we will deliver with the bad quality. And then manager will say, okay, no, there are two ways, or you will work overtime and it will be paid for you, or the manager will say, okay, no problem, we go with the reduced quality, which is a big mistake. And the companies, they do this. Next, maintaining good quality constantly over time. It is extraordinary heavy to maintain good quality constantly in a time. Imagine that all of us are testing professionally for 10 years. It is pain in the head. Only psychologically prepared people can be prepared to withstand such a pressure. One more problem is centralized knowledge and expertise. What is this? If company is only giving me all biggest functionalities to test, then that means that after some period of time, I will become the expert. But what will happen when I go? When I'm sick, when I go on a leave, there is no one who can cover me. Companies are not thinking about this. They see guy is a good expert, give him everything. Wow, it is good. He tests, he's a proficient. You know, he's finishing the work for, from us. We don't care about tomorrow, you know. And then I become sick. I go on a one month leave. Nothing moves in the testing. Everything is dead. Why? Because they didn't spread, spread all the heaviest tasks to everybody. This is the way to learn the people. Work distribution assignment, this is what I explained. Moving all the assignment with all level of heaviness to all people around the team, not only to few of us. And making fun, making work fun and interesting. Now this is for me very important part. I love to work for the company where I can joke every day, telling nice jokes, bad jokes. Even I like little to molest the people, to be honest. You know, I like to molest and also I like that people throw some bad jokes on my account. You know, and when I start laughing every day, even heaviest work for me, it's me it seems very easy. You know, then I know a little bit to take a mobile phone of the friend and I bring him with my, on my house. Then he doesn't know where is the mobile phone, you know. But we are good friends. We do, we do these kind of jokes. But in the, in the bigger period that is in front of us, we are becoming extraordinary friends and the work is moving forward. Otherwise, everything is dead again. Okay. And at the end 
of this presentation today, and I hope that I'm on time, I want to tell you that every software tester has a skills. I don't care about all the skills, guys. I will just tell you what are the most important skills that you need for the design. There are some skills that I call them critical skills. First of all, the most important skill that you would never assume it if I didn't wrote it here, I can guarantee with my head that nobody of you will tell me that skill. That skill you cannot learn, first of all. You can only shape it through the way how you work and that skill you inherited as part of your characters when you were born and from the genes of your parents. That is psychological and mental stability. The most critical and important skill that any tester should have. Because I was witness when big experts were crying on the work. Crying, resigning under big pain because the pressure was enormous. If you are not psychologically and mental stable guy or person, forget about doing this work. This is the most critical skill. Everything else you can learn. Why I put it on the bottom of pyramid? Because this is the fundamental. If you kill it, everything upper is destroyed. After that, you need to understand business requirement and technical documentation. You can learn that. And on top of pyramid, I put pressure and endurance. What is the meaning of this? I was allocated to the sites, guys, listen to this, where I worked 30 hours, 36 hours constantly, with a couple of hours in a break just to sleep, like this, several weeks and months. Now tell me, would you be able to withstand such a high pressure and to endure all of this? That is the price of becoming the expert. You need to withstand pressure and there is a sacrifice. It doesn't last forever, obviously, it will come to the end. But if you don't have enough endurance to withstand the pressure, forget about doing this job. Why? Because, I will repeat, when there is a lot of money in the game, when there is a lot of money in the game, there is no love between team members. We can be in love, fake love, but there is no love, love at the end. And obviously all other skills that I listed here, but again I will repeat, the most important one, which you cannot learn, you need to inherit it partly, and then you just can shape it during your career, that is psychological and mental stability. That is the most important for this job and for the design of the calendars, then you can learn everything. So, guys, again, I want to say thank you to my friends from Infinum who invited me as a today's guest lecturer. I tried in this limited amount of time that I had to present some important topics based on my more than decade big professional experience that I think they are critical parts of the testing. I hope that you really enjoyed this session. I hope that as well this is not the last session, that we will have many more sessions that will come where we will be able to cover also other aspects of testing. And for now, be, before I uh, call my friend Igor to start with the automation part, I want to ask any of you to give me any comment if you want, maybe to challenge me if you want on the things that I spoke, because I am a very open guy, even if you want to challenge me, I'll try to defend myself in the word to word. And if you have any question to me that I can answer you, I will answer you. If not, I can assure you, you will not be left without the answer from my side. So if somebody wants to ask me something, don't be shy. I know it's not easy to ask, there is a lot of people, but trust me, it's more heavier for me to speak in front of all of you rather than you asking me a question. So if somebody wants to ask something, you can ask, 
Otherwise, you can as well ask me after this session if something will pop up in your, in your brain. So... Okay. Uh, um, like test design calendars are relatively unknown term in yes. our community, at least. Yes. Um, is there some kind of uh, uh, maybe question of uh, how big company or how how big QA team should be in order to implement everything that you talked about? Yep. This is a very good question. Because I assume yes. small companies with. Yes. This is a very good question. By the way. Company can never be too big for this. Even one single guy that is present in the quality assurance team should have, should have the knowledge because you should not even start functional testing nor automation without those calendars prepared because for the God's sake, how you will know what to test, how you will know at the end what to automate. It is not normal. So one guy in, in your company that is dedicated to the testing, it is enough that he starts that thing. Maybe on the beginning he will not know this, but then you will learn it. Ask help from the guy who is experienced inside it. And I can guarantee you that the quality of your products will increase momentarily, not with time, immediately after those calendars. Good question, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so, okay, yes, please. Okay, maybe a small uh, for example, when we have uh, the same situation when uh, you must to uh, suppose uh, some project as a one way, uh, and this project started more than maybe three or four months later. You mean earlier? And uh, okay. uh, what will you do in this situation? Uh, what uh, will be your main focus in this situation? I understand. I understand. Also a very good question. He asks what happens when you are in delay of testing, you moved your testing further, but there are no designs and calendars. Why he is asking this question? Did you ask yourself? I know. Because he was in a situation when he felt the pain and there was a lot of problems and defects and somebody asked him, where are you with the testing? And they said, we don't know. There is some gap because obviously you are not doing good testing. In such cases, you should stop your testing activities at least for a while and try creating such calendars from scratch from the beginning. Then you can mark inside those calendars what you already covered, what is working, and you would be surprised how many items you will detect that are not covered. And then they, you will say, wow, if I created this from the beginning, I would not have so many defects. So answer on your question is stop your testing activities for a while and concentrate on a design and later return it to see what you covered, what you missed. And I can guarantee you, you will immediately detect some items. And here I have guys who are sitting like Danilo who did that. They stopped their testing activities because it was a mess. They did design of the calendars and then they detected that the pain is very big after this that they were not even started the testing. So you should do this as per my honest and humble advice. Okay, thank you. Any other question? I have one. Yes, please. Uh, so basically, how uh, could you recommend someone that has an issue with their higher-ups where they refuse to create uh, such calendars and plans and stuff, and they still try to like put pressure on the team to like meet some deadlines and everything, but there's no like structured calendar. So could you maybe uh, give give me or us a recommendation how to approach? Uh, yeah, this is very good question. I will tell you immediately what I do. This is a question directly to myself because it happens to me from day to day basis. The answer is very simple, guys. Don't remove this from your head. You are responsible for the quality. Your manager, not as much as you. He has bonuses. If he push you, he will receive big bonus. It is bonus on your back. You will not receive that amount of bonus. Yeah, uh, I, think you didn't quite understand the I understand. I will come to that. This is just introduction. <laughs> then, then, what I am telling them, you want to push me. There are no, you are not allowing me to build the calendars because you are telling me there is no time. We don't need those calendars. 
but you have problems. No problem. I can then guarantee you we will deliver software with limited quality and then it's not my responsibility because me as a tester I raised you the concern that I'm testing with the limited quality because you are not allowing me and giving me a vision for bigger picture. And then at the end he will not approve such the approach. He will tell you okay go and build your calendars because at the end he will be responsible for bad quality not you. So do this I'm doing that always when they approach me like this. Basically he is a senior to me and I'm, I'm a junior and uh, he, he was the one that basically taught me everything I know about testing and stuff but he still refused to make it. But what, I know but what is the point? If he is your senior that doesn't mean he will be always be better than you. He cannot be better than you. You are executing not him because from one point of time he will lose visionary. Because if you are testing constantly uh, in two, three years, you will know more better than him. Then he is not anymore your superior. You can challenge that as well. I did that. And then those guys are removed, not you. Because at the end, managers from above, they will say, oh, he executes everything. So this is the answer. Good. Okay, so I believe more, that's it, guys. More questions, I think. We, we will have uh, time yes. uh, to ask after, after uh, another. Okay. Thank you.